Welcome to West Coast Grandma. My name is Elizabeth and I'm so happy you're joining me today. We're gonna to do a couple of fun things. Uh, first of all, um, I, I uh, said on my last, one of my last videos that I was making rhubarb curd for Mother's Day and I had a couple of people ask me for the recipe. So I thought today we'll make it together. So on our way up to the garden, we're just gonna do a little walk around, take a look at things. Uh, I'll show you some of the work we've been doing on our new deck. We're just gonna head on up and get what we need from the garden to make our rhubarb curd, and then we'll get back and get started. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay, let's head on out. We'll get up to the garden. Oh, there's Riker having a snooze. Hey, we're coming out onto our deck. Richard designed this himself. Well, actually Richard and um, Sticks and Stones projects of Victoria, they did some too but um, they did all the framing and built the pergola here because this is my husband's outdoor kitchen, what he always wanted. There you go, you can see all of our privacy uh, shields. Those are from Core Landscaping up near Cumberland. Yeah, this one is my favorite. This one's called Salmon Run. Yeah, anyway. The deck is all pretty well done. We're just waiting for the glass to come in. There's the posts up, but uh, no glass yet. So it's going to be great to get that all done. So let's head on up. All right. We do have more privacy panels here. This is what we did two years ago. This is our little sort of a sunken patio. We have a big pond here. I should just see if the koi will come. They usually will. They hear me. Oh yes, here they come. Oh, yeah, they want to eat. I'll come back and feed them in a minute. They're so used to hearing us. We've had them now for probably 16 years. So a couple of them are probably a good four to five pounds. They're huge. There we are. So we're gonna head up. Like I say, these are our little privacy panels. I love that one right there too. That's called Spirit Bear. My husband's so clever at doing that kind of thing. He just designed it all and built it. So take a look at these rhodos all blooming. And that yellow one is an azalea. It smells so good. It's absolutely delicious. But there we are. So we're gonna cut across this way. If I continued on that pathway, I come to our uh, fire pit, which we use all the time when our family is here. I think I mentioned that before. And Richard and I often sit out there and have a fire at night. It's just so nice. These trees are all lit up at night too and the fire pit itself. And that is our little eating area when all the family's here. We just had no place to sit. Everybody was eating on their knees. So we thought of building this little patio and it's absolutely perfect. I just decorated all and it's great. So there we are coming up to the garden. So we are gonna pick probably not very much rhubarb, only maybe six or eight stalks. That's gonna probably be good. There we go. Alrighty, I just had to take a minute there to put the latch on the gate because the dog would be in here in a flash if he could. So we'll head up here to the rhubarb and see if we can find some good uh, stalks. It's getting a little old, I think. Um, it usually only lasts for about two to three weeks. Where is the rhubarb? Oh, there it is, hidden down there and behind my blueberry bush. There we are. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with it though this year. It's, um, it really just takes some watering and it does everything itself. It, it sort of comes up in those little bulbs and then in a couple of days, you've got rhubarb. So just a matter of picking it. The more you pick it, the better it is. Let's see if I grab you here. Just trying to get some nice red ones because the rhubarb curd is beautiful if you have red rhubarb. It tastes just as good if you have green but the red rhubarb gives it a sort of a soft pink color. 
These ones are small but nice and red. So let's get a couple of these ones. There we go. A couple more, we should be good. Oh. Riker probably sees the ravens. Those ravens come and sit on the top of the shed. Oh, there's actually just a robin there, but the raven usually sits on the top of the shed and torments him to death. And what they do is they, they just have a gourmet meal off the top of my compost every day. But they're massive ravens, so I love ravens, so I don't, I don't mind. They can share, they can share. It's good, good with me. Okay, so there we have all of our rhubarb. I usually um, snip the tops off while I'm out here and I leave them just on the ground. They kind of act as a bit of a deterrent to the weeds for a little bit. And uh, I snip both ends off so it's less work when I get in, but today I'll just do it when I get in. So um, I think we're good for rhubarb. We'll take it on down to the kitchen. Actually, before we leave, I'm just gonna show you how everything is just taking off. I mean, that heat we've had in the last week, everything is just growing like crazy. So all my onions, they were just tiny, like they were onion plants I put in, not sets. I don't like onion sets. They never really get very big. And I find that, actually I started all these myself from seed and then transplanted them into the garden. And they are so good. Um, there's just so the strawberries, look at all the flowers there. And my garlic, it's getting huge. And this is just all greens for stir frying, which we've been trying to keep eat, eating just to, to use them all up. So I'm pretty happy with how things are going so far. Um, that's turnip. Yeah, my ganja. Yeah, my beets are taking off and a few parsnips I put in. And again, um, this is all bok choy and Chinese cabbage. I was just stocking to pick some to take to my daughter where I'm heading this afternoon. That's my whole point of the big garden is to help everybody out. Um, I actually have a few little cauliflowers uh, just forming heads there too. So I've tied them. I don't know if you can see some of the ones I've tied right, right there, just uh, to stop the sun from making them go yellow trying to keep them nice and white. So there we are, good old Riker. Okay, let me just head out of the gate here and we'll head back to the house. Walking along the edge of the garden here and we'll head back down to our house. That's the back of the fire pit. Those are all blueberry bushes. I still have blueberries in my freezer from last year. So they do so well. We've got the water just right they've got sprinklers and it just keeps it a little bit like a bog and they love it so we just love blueberries and you can do a million things with them there you can sort of see how how our deck is there we're pretty happy with it i love the other deck and i was sad to take it down but actually this one is great so there we go those privacy panels we have a suite next door so that's why we put the privacy panels of salmon run there and our little maple tree which we just found stuck in the forest that was kind of a nice surprise and that's just our little seating area up there with our chandelier we kind of love that too it's pretty nice we're pretty happy so I'm gonna head in and then we're gonna get started and we're gonna make our rhubarb curd. Okay, I have everything ready here. I actually got all the ingredients uh, ready just so that I wouldn't have to take time to go get them all out. And we are just going to uh, rinse off this rhubarb quickly and uh, chop it up and uh, we'll be right back. We'll just give it a good rinse. And here we are back. I just chopped off all the leaves. Um, they're all gonna just go into my compost. I'm just quickly going to take the ends off of these. Again, everything everything goes in my compost. I think I've said that before. I called it my gold dirt. I don't waste anything. Uh, even leftover food scraps, 
course, that's probably why the ravens come all the time. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't waste a thing. It's all gonna just go back into my garden. So I am gonna take these and just cut them up into probably about one inch pieces, like so. These are my new knives, Kami Koto. I love them. So here's my Vitamix blender. This blender is ancient. It looks ancient. Uh, my parents gave it to me probably, I want to say 20 years ago because they weren't using it and it was a reconditioned one then. So I have no idea how old it is, but it's always perfect. I use it all the time. I use it all summer. I make salt in it, uh, flavored salts with all my herbs, which I use all year. I'll be making that in the future. That's one of my big things is just adding all the herbs to my salt. There we are. So there's our cut up rhubarb. If it is getting a little stringy, you could just steam it a little bit first uh, because the whole idea is we want it to be silky smooth. So we'll pop it onto there. And the next thing we're gonna add is two teaspoons of flour. So we'll put that in. I love little bowls. That's the other thing I cut. Old ones. I love old bowls. Uh, about a half a teaspoon of vanilla. You can use the juice of a lemon instead if you want a bit of a more zippy uh, curd, but I, I don't have any lemons today, so. This is three quarters of a cup of honey. So we're gonna pop that in. There we go. Good. So it's a little bit sweet. It's gonna be delicious. And a pinch of my salt. My fresco salt and three eggs. Again, eggs from my friend's farm, Flatlands Farm, down on the corner here of my road. There we go. So once you get all those ingredients in, you want to blitz it for about two to three minutes so that everything gets the opportunity to be good chopped and small. So I'm going to come right back when I get this done. Um, it's super loud. It, so I will, yeah, I'll just blitz it and then we'll come right back. There we go, blitzing. And while we're doing that, I'm just going to turn my pan on to low. And I am going to pop three quarters of a cup of butter into the pan and I'm going to let that melt while we're blitzing our rhubarb. Okay, we have our very blitzed rhubarb uh, mixture here in my, in my blender. So this is kind of the tricky part now. This is the part that is a little bit time consuming. Um, we want to sieve it. And that's going to take out any last little bits of uh, the fiber of the rhubarb. So we want to, <laughs> it just takes time. There's really not much more you can do. So if you have a little sieve, you're just going to do this. You can actually do it twice. You can actually do it a little bit later when you've uh, cooked it. And um, you can run it to the sieve again, but I found it to be just silky smooth just after the one sip. I just ran it for probably a good three to four minutes in my blender. And of course the Vitamix does a great job. So let's put a bit more in here. Actually, we'll put it all in. While I was letting it blitz, I had time to clean up my kitchen. So that was good. So just to let you know, uh, this recipe I actually got from uh, Shay on the Elliott Homestead. Um, she does so many great recipes. Her homestead, I think is in Oregon. She never really has said where it is. It could be somewhere down in Washington, but it's beautiful. And she does all kinds of great recipes too. And this was one that she did. So uh, you can always check out the Elliott Homestead. So this is just gonna take me a little while. 
No way to speed up putting it through here, but this is what's gonna give it that really silky texture. So when you've done it, we served this on ice cream for Mother's Day and it was so hot out. It was, I think, it must have, it was over 30. It must have been 31 or 32. And the ice cream was just turning to liquid and it was good, but my daughter said that they finished up the uh, rhubarb curd later on on some proper good hard ice cream and she said it was delicious. So we all thought though that it would be really good maybe on a cobbler or serving it uh, with, oh, some scones would be delicious, even some blueberry scones. So I think it's one of those things that you could do anything with. I know uh, Shay from the Elliott Homestead says that you can just eat it out of a jar or put it on toast. I don't know, I haven't experimented enough with it, but maybe I will now that I'm making another batch here. So I'm gonna just take a minute or two here. It's gonna probably take five minutes to get this all strained and then I'll come right back. I think that's about as much as we're gonna get out here. I'm trying to press it down and it's just dro barely dripping. So I think we're gonna call that good. And what's left there, I'm just gonna add it to my compost. So I'll just put that over in the sink. All right. So now we're just gonna use a whisk and we are just gonna cook it because the flour and the eggs that we put in are just gonna thicken it to make it just like pudding. So it's just a matter of stirring. It doesn't take very long. I think it's already getting thicker. So you'll have to let me know in the comments if you try it. Um, I wouldn't say it's the best thing I ever had, but it is pretty delicious. And I think with a bit of experimenting, um, I, I do think that maybe on a cobbler, it might be better than on ice cream. Uh, or maybe just some of the pudding with a bit of whipping cream, that might be delicious too. So, oh yeah, it's already getting thick. So it doesn't take very long. And then I'm gonna pop it into my dish here and we're gonna put it in the dish and let it just cool off. And I think we'll be having it probably for dinner tonight. I might even take some to my daughter when I go. She always loves everything that I make. She has three kids, three little ones, so time is pretty precious for her and I don't mind helping out. Oh yeah, it's definitely getting thicker. So it's just buttery goodness. And you know, really rhubarb, a lot of people don't eat rhubarb, but rhubarb is delicious. And so if you can find a good way to, to use it, something a little bit different, then it's worth having a little bit of a rhubarb patch in your garden. I do keep it all year. I love rhubarb just with cottage cheese, like stewed rhubarb or rhubarb pie. So there are things you can do that's delicious. I think uh, people just tend to not use it that much. There we are, I think we're pretty good. So we're gonna move my dish over here. I'm gonna turn the light off. I think we're thick enough. It's gonna set a bit more as it's cooling off, just because of the eggs. There we go. I love this little cast iron pan. I tend to use mostly cast iron now. The only thing about the cast iron I don't like is they are just so heavy. Um, good. West Coast Grandma, getting arthritis or something in my hands and they get sore, but I don't know, they're heavy, but I do like having the, um, well, all of our frying pans, everything are all cast iron and they do fry great and they're just my favorite. We've tried quite a few different kinds, like the cast iron. This is just enamel coated, but there, I think we're good. Alrighty, I'm gonna pour this into the dish here and I think we're gonna be good. There we are. All that goodness, let me get my spatula and get it all out. There we are, so we have it, rhubarb curd. So I hope you've enjoyed today. I hope you've enjoyed me sharing this recipe, which I am sharing from Elliot Homestead. Um, 
let me know if you like it and I hope you'll consider subscribing, seeing what's coming up next. Uh, hit the like button and be sure to send me a comment and let me know if you tried it and if you liked it. So uh, we'll catch you again on West Coast Grandma. It was great having you along. Elizabeth signing out.